Now we're going to talk about skewness and symmetry of a distribution. Typically, if we have a mean and median that are roughly the same, roughly equal to each other, as in example B here, then we have a symmetrical distribution. If we're in a situation where the mean is significantly less than the median, the distribution is said to be skewed to the left, and as you can see by the slope, um, while more of the data is on the right-hand side, the skew is where the small amount of data is and possibly outliers to the left. Uh, similarly, in part C here, it's skewed to the right when the mean is significantly above the median. Now, small amounts of uh, you know, very outlying data will not change what a median is going to be significantly, but it will change a mean. So this is one of the reasons why in cases like, uh, say, income or house sales, things along those lines, where if you get a very high wage or a very high um, dollar amount for a specific house, then it can really skew the data. Maybe most of the data, maybe most of the house sales are around $200,000, but if one house sales in you know, for several million, it could skew the data to the right. So the median is typically what we look for in things like house sales and income. Now, we looked at box plots earlier. The previous example I gave was pretty much symmetrical. Uh, that would reflect much like what B is. Uh, these are actually flip-flop now. So A is skewed right. So most of the data falls between, say, 50 and 60, maybe even 50 and 58. And there's lesser amounts that stray all the way out to about 68, something along those lines. Similarly, the one that's skewed left, most of the data falls between, say, 10 and a half and 14 and a half, and there's a smaller amount of data that tails off to the left. And again, the, the box part of the box plot illustrates the middle 50%. So we've got the bottom 25% is a very long, elongated thing here on the skewed left part C. Uh, the middle 50% is represented here, and the top 25% is a much smaller line. That indicates how it's skewed. Now here's a data set, and I'm going to show you in just a minute how to do this on the calculator, but this is our five number summary. Our min was 40, our Q1 42, median is 45, Q350 and max is 73. Now we talked before about the IQR and the upper and lower fences. I'm going to calculate those for you right now. So the IQR is Q3 minus Q1, so 50 minus 42, and that results in a value of 8. Now the lower fence formula is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. We found our IQR to be 8, so it's going to be 42 minus 1.5 times 8, and that totals to 30. So any value in our data set that's below 30 would be considered an outlier. Similarly, the upper fence is the upper quartile, or Q3, plus 1.5 times the IQR, and as you can see, that calculates to 62. So any value of the data set that is six, it, that's above 62 is going to be considered an outlier. Now, looking at this data, we don't have any lower bound ones, but we do have one value that's above 62, and that is 73. Now, real quick, I'm going to show you how to do this on a calculator and also show you a few other things. All right, this is your typical TI-84 calculator. Uh, if you've got an 83, part of this is going to be slightly different. I've got the screen history up so that you can see exactly what I'm hitting. Now, I've already entered the data in, but where we go to do that, we hit the Stat key, and our first option is Edit, and that's what we want to do, so hit Enter. What we would do is put all the data into a, a given list. I'm going to put them all into list one. They're already there. So I put them in, in the same order in which I had them listed off for you. Now, I, I want to show you something on how you can easily clear out a list. Say I want to uh, clear out list 2. I'm going to highlight the area up there that says list 2, hit the clear button, and then hit enter. 
and that will clear out an entire list and that that would save the the pains of just erasing one thing at a time now once I have my data in and I've got it in L1 for list 1 I'm going to hit the stat key again now I need to go over to calculate calc so I'm going to arrow to the right once and the first option is what I want the one var stats I will then hit enter now in a TI-84 they give you a list as far as what you want to enter um, or in 84 in an 83 or one that doesn't have this set up you're going to just have to tell it list one and if it's not already there you hit the second key and then the number one for list one and as you notice in the blue there it's L1 and that's where we find it for this case there is no frequency so we don't have a frequency list so we just go down to calculate and hit enter now this gives us um, a whole bunch of information uh, we've talked about how to calculate the mean X bar that is the very first thing given and 48 is our mean um, S of X is our sample standard deviation uh, Sigma is if we were using this as a population which we're saying it's not N is 10 that's the total number of data points and now let's get the five number summary I'm going to pull the rest of this up so there's our 40 42, 45, 50, and 73. So this is where we calculate all those things. Now, if we want to just view the box plot, and we can also check for outliers in this manner, we hit the second key. Well, let me clear this out. We're going to hit the second key, and then the stat plots. I've already got it turned on and set up, but I'll show you how you would go into it. So we're going to hit Enter the type of uh, we've got two different types of box plots the first of which which is also the fourth of the different possible options we can choose is the one we're going to be interested in it's going to give us uh, values uh, past the whisker marks of anything that is considered an outlier so I'm going to choose that one if I choose this one it would just give us the different different ones like we saw on the, on the PowerPoint so if it's not on, you have to mark it on. You also have to make sure that every, anything else is cleared out that may mess up whatever you've got. If you've got anything graphed in the lines, it could cause a problem. So I'm just going to hit graph. Now mine has come up rather nicely, but if it doesn't for you, then you should hit the zoom button and then the number 9, zoom stat. And then it should zoom in on, on whatever it is you're looking at. So this is my box plot with my minimum and my maximum is actually out here but it has broken out from the actual total line because it's too far above the typical so it shows itself as an outlier we can also hit the trace button which is right there and now we can move around and see what the values are so if you notice this point is the min and it gives the value of 40 arrow over the Q1 is 42 the median is 45, Q3 is 50. It gives us a value of X is 55, but that's really not the maximum. That's just the next point. There's our max at 73, and that is our outlier. 